Hello, everyone. This is Rebecca Jeffries, your host for The Caretakers, the podcast where we meet people who are making a difference in the world. Today, we are joined by Jimmy Clare, who is known as a crazy fitness guy. He has his own website. He's got great free information on fitness. But today, we're actually not even going to focus on his business. We are going to focus on the fact that he is a young college student who also has autism. And I really wanted Jimmy to come on board with me today because I've seen my son try to go through the uh, college path and it was really a struggle. And Jimmy has had some success with this. And so I'm hoping he can give us some insight on how to handle this. So welcome, Jimmy. Glad you could be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So tell us, what are you studying at? You're at a community college. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So what are you studying? Uh, I'm studying uh, media studies. What does that mean by definition? Uh, basically, it can lead me into uh, it can lead me to uh, social media marketing, uh, uh, radio show host, uh, broadcaster. Uh, it can lead me into uh, copywriting, book publishing, etc. Yeah. So it sounds like you kind of are attracted to the jobs that keep you behind the scenes. Uh. You would say that, but it also can lead me to motivational speaking, of, of which I want to get into. That would uh, be awesome. Like I said, it's my only my 38th podcast guest appearance. So, uh, and I've been on some live shows and yeah, so yep. I'm not afraid to get in front of. That's awesome. People. That's awesome. Now, how many years into your college studies are you? Are you in your first or second year? uh one too many years <laughs> too many you've probably gotten part-time a bit i would expect right yeah, yeah. uh I, I i literally jumped around five different majors because uh i didn't know this major existed mm. um one probably because i didn't i enrolled in college myself without my parents help Wow. I mean, they're helping me pay for it, obviously. Yeah. But but um, but I chose to go to college myself. I, they didn't make me go to college. Mm -hmm. It was like I told them at the end of high school, yeah. I didn't want to go to college. I took three years off. Okay. I I I I worked. Uh, I think after the first year of doing nothing, uh, and it's not that I didn't want to do anything or I was lazy. It just that. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I started college late. So I'm pretty much and like the older student in the class. Uh, I mean, unless if you count the teacher, but uh, <laughs> I mean, not saying they're old. I mean, that they're whatever. They're not college age. Just, yeah, we used to call them non-traditionals. I don't know if they use that word anymore, but if they were I don't know. older than the traditional student, they were considered a non-traditional. Um, I think if you were attending evening classes at a community college, you're going to find more people in my age group because their work day is done and they want to learn something new. So you get every age there. Yeah, well, I actually have seen some people uh, uh, older than me uh, in some of my classes, which that doesn't bother me any. I just, I just saying, I, I, in some of my classes, I'm pretty much like the oldest student there, and I was like. It doesn't bother me any. Yeah. I, was like, I, I was like, I started late. I don't care. Mm -hmm. And my dad always kind of gives me a little hard time. I was like, well, when are you going to finish college when you're 50? I was like, <laughs> well, I don't, I was like, I don't remember having a time frame on this. And I was like, I'm hoping to finish sometime before 30 or around 30. But yeah, I was like, I'm going as fast as I can. This semester, I'm taking one class because uh, there's literally, uh, when I looked at the classes for registering the semester, there was one teacher who was teaching like 10 of the same classes. And I was like, what happened to the other professors? Did yeah. they just like lock them up in the room closet or what? <laughs> or, <laughs> I was like, uh, I was like, oh, did they all have coronavirus or what's going on right. here? Right. Well, I mean, thing, I really hope they don't have coronavirus. Yeah, I know what you're saying. <laughs> but one thing I really admire about your approach is that you are taking it in your own time. You're not letting the pressure of trying to finish this degree in two years 
And I think that allows for a lot more natural growth and enjoyment in the whole process and lets it unfold more naturally. So I really admire you for that. Well, I try to enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't always happen, but. Yeah, so I, I do understand um, community colleges offer some um, enhanced, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, supports for kids who are coming in with a spec on the spectrum. And have you taken advantage of any of those? Uh, yes, I have. Um, there, there, uh, sometimes I find that there's not always uh, support to be had. Um, I had some issues with teachers that I'm not gonna say names, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but uh, I don't always know exactly who to go to because um, like, you know, in, um, I don't know, like in high school and middle school, there's a principal's office and you know yeah. exactly where the principal's office is. I don't even know who the, who the, where the dean's office is. I don't even know yeah. where the president's office is. And I, I, I actually, the other time when I was, the last time I was on campus, I actually found out where the president's office by accident was. Mm -hmm. and, and I was like, oh, that's where it is. Yeah. And they finally put a sign there after all these years. And it's like, huh, oh. gee, that was helpful. <laughs> well, I don't think you're alone in your frustrations. Having watched my son, try to go through community college where we we met with the department to try and get accommodations for him to be able to put in assignments later than the rest of the class or to have an exam in a super quiet room. Um, but so, just like you said, some of the teachers just didn't want to honor it. They want all the kids to be autonomous and you're not all created equally. It just doesn't work like that. So did you face- I wish you I wish it worked like that. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, getting accommodations is has been rough for me in the many years. Uh, again, not naming any names, but uh, I, I always feel like I had some. I always felt like I was always a bothersome to mm. the, the the disability center where. That's I asked them where their accommodations and it's like, well, you have to request them in, the, in advance. And it's like, there's only been one semester where I dropped the ball on that. And I was like, how many more semesters do I need to stay here and to prove to myself that I right. uh, can get, um, that I'm requesting them ahead of time, but I'm still not getting them. I was like, I don't know if you go from A to Z or Z to A, yeah. but somehow my name is always getting jumped over. Uh -huh. That sounds extremely but just in my opinion, but I'm yeah. not saying that's true or not, but well, what, what advice could you give for some students who are just starting out in the college scene? Uh, I would suggest make nice with your teachers because uh, I'm not saying they go easier on you and they don't go easier on you, but but it helps in your benefit is to be really uh, to be nice. Um, uh, because like if you don't have your accommodations right away they'll still let you use your accommodations with uh, their accommodations and they don't have to do that mm -hmm. by no means but uh, but it's like and, and and just flat out tell them it's like hey my accommodations are late I'm I'm still following up with them per, and if you want to follow up with them be my guest, uh, and as I, but I have no reason to lie that I get accommodations. As I can even show you the email that I sent to the accommodations office. Here's my accommodations, and uh, and um, pretty much like a hundred percent of the time, they're willing to just go ahead and say, okay. Yeah. And as I, are, are there different styles of classes that appeal to you more than others? Uh, for me, well, do you mean by like subject wise or? Uh, like big, the form of it, like the big lecture room or a small intimate group around a table. I mean, what, what makes you thrive more? Honestly, well, my community college, there's only about like, I think there's only like 25 max in the class, but, mm -hmm. but, 
the classes I've seen, it's only big for like one day and then it, it just whittles down. But mm-hmm. the, the classrooms are compact and and so there's not really like a huge big lecture hall. It's just here's a room you go into, the size of a broom closet. Uh, mm-hmm. of, it feels like it anyway. Some of the rooms, not yeah. all of them, but some of them. And uh, but and we set these long tables with uh, with rolling chairs in front of them. But yeah, it doesn't seem to. I always like to sit in front of the class because then I don't have to like peer over someone's head. Yeah, I'm not saying really that they point. have big head, but I mean it, <laughs> it is like. Uh, and the teacher's like writing like right below that is like. Yeah. I can't find. <laughs> Do you find it helps you with focus to be up front? Yeah, because then I'm not like, okay, the clock might be in all the way in the back. I'm not yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, or, or if there's not even a clock, it, uh, it just, I, it's easier for me to see. Uh, but, and I have spinal stenosis in my neck. So if I had to peer around something for very yeah. long, it starts getting like, ow, ow, cramp, yeah. cramp. So one of the aspects of being a college student is that you have free time between classes. So how did you handle yourself? What did you do with your free time? What free time? If you, if you had free time between classes, you're telling me you had none. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. Uh, I, I have my own podcast. I have my website. Where's my free time? Okay, so you're a busy guy. <laughs> uh, if I, well, in my free time, uh, I, uh, I like to read my books. Uh, uh, last year, I read uh, tw- 21 books. Uh, throughout the whole year. Uh, I I also like to play video games on the weekend. Uh, and so that just, a, I always like to, I, I, I always said to my parents, what I always like, how I know that I'm still enjoying life is I have many different uh, things that, different things I like to enjoy. It's not just TV. It's not just video games. It's not mm-hmm. just my website or my podcast. It's a mix of everything. Yeah. Like I, I schedule, uh, I have, I do a block scheduling on my calendar uh, in this app called Time Tune. And uh, so I, I schedule uh, times of TV for the weekend, like one to five. And or one to six, and and somebody might say like you watch TV f- for all those five hours, and say, no, not always. Sometimes I do one to, to two or three, but it, uh, and sometimes at at the hour I get up, take a few minute break, and go back. Yeah, and it's like, but it's not like oh, I'm sitting there all day watching TV. Yeah. I might be playing my video games while watching TV, or I might just be playing my PS4. Yeah, but it's but I have many different interests. Um, but it's not just like oh, I just do one thing. Here's my boring life. I'm always <laughs> doing. That's why I kid around. Is like my free time. Yeah, so like, it my sounds free like. T- your advice is really to to be multifaceted, try different things, and and find a number of passions. Yeah, because like uh, I give you an example is that I've seen people who just come home from work or or school, and all they do is like, well, I get home and I watch TV. Yeah. So you you go to school, maybe work afterwards, and watch TV. Don't read any books. Nope. Much more, right? Just watch more TV. Yeah. Sounds boring. (laughs) I'm with you. I'm going to give you one final question before we wrap up. Do you have any advice for us parents when we're watching you guys in college and maybe we see you struggling to learn the system? Do you want us to step in or should we be hands off? What do you think? I would say... um... I would say a mix of both, and because if somebody uh, 
was not a good uh, student. I'm not saying not a good student, but if somebody who didn't doesn't know how to study, we probably need we definitely need help. Or or if we are procrastinating, maybe we need help in the right direction on how to stop being a procrastinator. As I've seen myself procrastinating on stuff. Uh, I'll give you an example on that. Uh, today, the last few days, I was kind of like kicking around a little bit because uh, one of uh, like Pinterest changed their dimensions of their uh, image Im images for the platforms. And I was like, oh, that's not good because all my images are well below that. And yeah. I was like, uh, th this would be fun and one of the tools i use is called canva yeah. and i was like um, i was like am i gonna have to make a custom template and just uh make the make it the, the same exact size uh, and make a copy of each one and put the design on it for each one and, and do an extra step well i got onto canva today and there we have the the new dimensions for pinterest and yeah. it's like holy moly and it's like <laughs> i was kicking my feet around for that yeah <laughs> i was like well i should have done that first before i i kicked around and it's like well right. way to go jimmy waste your freaking week awesome <laughs> so you don't mind if one of your parents steps in and says jimmy just you know do it yeah sometimes like I, I ask sometimes i even ask my mom to uh well a lot of times i ask my mom to help me yeah with uh if would I you ever understand. ask her to step in and talk to your professor for you if you felt like you weren't advocating for yourself very well? Mm, probably not. And the reason why, and I'm not saying that to be mean to her or anything. Oh, no, I don't it see it that, that way at all. Uh, it is that I, I would be afraid that the professor would like kind of give me a hard time and, yeah. or might say something in front of everyone and say, or should I have you, or talk to your mom about this? Right. And right. I was like, uh, excuse me? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. But, but I, I, I wouldn't mind having my parents say, like, uh, like talk to me one-on-one -on, -one on like game prep of why I should talk to my professor or how I should go for this topic yeah. if I approach. So but, they're, and, they empower you to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Because, uh, but for me, years ago, that was fine. Like when I, I was in public school, I, I didn't know how to advocate for myself. Fine by me. But in college, I enrolled in myself. And it's like, you can talk me out, talk me through the situation, uh, play devil's advocate with me. That's perfectly fine. But yeah. Hey, you know, I didn't get to where I am today without, uh, without speaking for myself. So uh, I've been, huh, hey, now I'm a motivational speaker, so I don't know when to shut up. So, <laughs> Jimmy, you're awesome. <laughs> All right, we're going to close on that thought. <laughs> it's been so delightful to have you with us here, Jimmy, on the po podcast called The Caretakers. It's been wonderful to have you, and I wish you all the best with your college classes. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Take care. <laughs>